Well, let's get a round of applause for Stoyan, so he's speaking about React memory leaks. All righty. Los Angeles. Same thing. Yes. Same thing. Excuse me. <laughs> I like the controversy in those meetups. <laughs> All right. Um, this is me. I'm Stoyan, and today we're going to talk about uh, memory leaks and uh, what are they and how to fix them and how to not crash your favorite user's browsers. Okay, um, so this is the plan for the talk. First, uh, talk about a uh, little bit about how we collect data about crashes in the app. Uh, then, how do we detect memory leaks? And then, explore a few uh, common leakage patterns in React and how to fix them. Uh, the audience, if you build pages with very little JavaScript, I love you. But this talk may not be so interesting. It's mostly about single page apps build with React or if there are any other frameworks I've heard of there, but I haven't seen any. Uh, so, yeah. All right, this is me, uh, webpagetest.org engineer in the bubble that I live in the web performance world. Everybody knows about web page test, but uh, I was surprised, maybe shocked to learn that not everybody has used this tool. Uh, it's been around for a while um, and it's kind of the best of breed of cross browser testing and uh, for those of you who haven't tried it, you're in for a treat. And uh, yeah, I was at Yahoo doing some performance research. I spent some time up uh, at Facebook as well. And I wrote a book, one of the first about React back in the olden days of 2016, imagine that. And, and then there was an update last Christmas, which means it's already out of date, so don't buy it. <laughs> ah, water. <laughs> what about your See other me. books? Are they I, I <laughs> your other <already>? No. <laughs> <laughs> my bestseller is called JavaScript Patterns, written in 2010, and the publisher is asking for an update, but uh, I'm too late. <laughs> and it's too successful now as it is. It has beautiful reviews, I don't want to ruin that. <laughs> <laughs> but enough about me. Well, let's talk about you, <laughs> about the application. So. Have you seen this thing? Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. Has it ever, do you think it ever happened with your applications? Yeah. No. Never. 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 <laughs> <laughs> maybe some low power devices, maybe some you know, inexpensive Android phones, maybe. But um, how do you know that it has never happened? Like, um, there was a, a blog post, but I suggest that you check it out by, by Nolan Lawson. So he created a, a memory leak, uh, exploration tool where you basically give it a URL to a single page app and it tries to find the links and clicks on them and then goes back and sees if there's any, uh, takes uh, memory feed snapshot and checks if there's any leakage if the, the memory snapshot is bigger than it was. So uh, turns out that, he, so he looked at the top 10 spots, he let them anonymous, but pretty much the conclusion is that everybody leaks except, not except, especially Site number 10, who on a single interaction dropped almost 200 megabytes of uh, you know, uncollected garbage. So the big spot may have a problem, but do you have a problem? Uh, how do you know you're crushing the tab, right? So uh, long, long time ago, we didn't know, but now there is a, the reporting API um, that I suggest you check if you haven't. This allows you to specify a uh, URL where the browser can send you information if, if there's a crash. Um, so yeah, you just have to specify reporting endpoints because it can send information about different things that are happening. Uh, you can specify different endpoints for, uh, for every event that you're interested in and report is kind of the older version for all the browsers. There's also JavaScript API. So the reporting API can send you out of memory data, like um, crashes when the browser becomes unresponsive, but also some other stuff like security violations, document policy violations. Uh, if the browser running your code, uh, you're relying on features that are already markedly deprecated. So yeah, definitely check it out. So 
let's say you've implemented this in your CEO, oh, we have a problem with leaking, just like everybody else. So what do you do? Option A, you call a friend, somebody who knows about memory leaks, and he comes with his or her expertise and uh, finds the leak and fixes it. And guess what, there's not only one leak, and next week there's gonna be two more. So that's not really a viable option. Option B is, uh, yeah, do it yourself. Basically, you, you load a page, navigate someplace, and then navigate back to the original state and take snapshots every step of the way. Garbage collects before that, and then you dip the snapshot from when you loaded the page, the interaction, and then back to the state. And if the memory is different, the, the size of the uh, heap snapshot, then we may have a problem. If that sounds non-trivial to you, you're not alone. And luckily we can use some help uh, from some open source tools. Like the first one is the one that I mentioned, Fuit, which I think means leak in the French, but I could be wrong, uh, or pronouncing it badly. It's correct. It's correct, thank you. <laughs> Merci. <laughs> uh, but the one that I'm going to talk about more is this uh, newish one from Facebook called Memlab. So what's Memlab? It's a command line tool. Uh, it uses Puppeteer to load a page and navigate to some interaction and then back and then does all these steps that I mentioned. Garbage collecting, taking heat snapshots. And then the really difficult part is after you have these giant uh, uh, heat snapshots, what, what, so what? You can use uh, dev tools to look at them, but that's not a pleasant task. So the intelligence in the tool is really in dipping and trying to pinpoint where stuff went wrong. So it works with these scenario files. So you, you give it, you have to implement those three you know, methods and you give it a URL where to go, uh, then some sort of action. So this is all puppeteer stuff, so it doesn't have to be a single click, it can be something more interesting. And then a way to go back and then does its magic and returns a result, something like this. So I uh, look a little bit overwhelming, but uh, you see a nice graph here of uh, how much memory in megabytes was allocated in each of the three steps. So this is the, the first navigation, interaction, going back. So in this case, you see that the memory keeps growing, so there's gotta be a problem in there. So here, mark number one, is you know loading six five six point five megabytes and then the action six point six and then the reverse which is even worse. Here mark number two, we see that the memlab found a thousand twenty four leaked objects, and then because that's a lot to uh, to show, then it gives you a representative sample of one of those. So what happened in this test page is this. We have, a, we have a loop and then we create divs and, and add them to, to a global variable and this is it. these are never garbage collected. So that's our leak. So the results can be overwhelming. Um, so um, it's trying, Memlab is trying its best to, uh, to give you one representative sample and it also works with the several analyzers out of the box but you can write your own if you know your applicational framework better. So let's play the game show, spot the leak. <laughs> is this a memory leak? Yeah, that's exactly what you should be doing, right? We don't need that object anymore. We are signing out to it and we signal to the garbage collection collector that it can go away. And what about this? Yeah, you would think no, but turns out it is, at least in Chrome. I guess Chrome retains a copy of, uh, of that object or some other way to do something with that object. So that's a leak. So like as if you need... The open? Sorry, what? Is it only if the test is open or...? Uh, that, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, but yeah, like as if you need another reason not to log stuff in production. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't wanna sound paranoid, but these leaks are everywhere. <laughs> so uh, there's Google Maps. Yeah, let's see. So uh, there was an example, okay. So you load a, a Google Maps someplace and then you click hotels 
and fills up the map with hotels. And then you click to clear the search here. And this is what uh, MemLab was used to test. So this is the URL. We clicked on hotels, then click to clear the search. And the results, 31 megabytes before, then 39 with all the hotels and stuff, and then 35. So something happened there. MemLab found seven leaks, all right, and quite, quite big. So the problem with this scenario files that MemLab uses is that um, they use Puppeteer, and I don't know about you, but I don't write Puppeteer stuff on daily basis, so I can forget the API, and it's a bit of a pain. So, um, yeah, in the scenario files, you, you add the three required methods, but then you can add more stuff, like cookies, if what you're testing is behind the login. Um, you can filter the leaks. Let's say you're not interested in anything over 10 megabytes, or, or under 10 megabytes, stuff like this. But because these are a pain to write, so this was my weekend project this Saturday, uh, to write a uh, extension to the recorder panel in DevTools that can create those uh, scenario files. All right, it's a Chrome extension. You can go to GitHub and grab it from there. It's not on the, on the, um, on the store. But um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, uh, with the recorder panel in DevTools. It's not on by default, so you have to go to more options and, and have it show up. And it can exp you can just start interacting with the page, and then it lets you export what you just did as a Puppeteer script, and it also allows extensions. So that's what I did. After you've, you've done your interaction to, to export this uh, as a scenario file and give it to my lab. So, um, yeah, that's a simple sample uh, output. Like I went to the web page test, I click something, then click something back, and this is the test that it, yeah, the scenario file that you generated. So it's a very simple tool, not too advanced. It looks for the initial navigation to give the URL, and then looks at clicks. The last click is attributed to the back action, and all others are shoved into the action. But it's a start, the, so that you can uh, continue with uh, you know, the puppeteer uphill battle. Uh, so yeah, so in this case, I found one React to do app, MVC, to do MVC.com. Um, so uh, I added one to do, then I added another, then removed them. So this is the original state. And this is what uh, my extension generated. Like only the last one click was considered as back. But in this case, this one should also be back. And my extension doesn't know anything about typing. So as a start, it's good enough. Then you can you know, just take the, the template and fix your stuff. So yeah, this was about the MemLab recorder. Check it out. And now um, let's go back to the, our show. Spot the leak. Now, you know, this might turn some people off because it's a class component. It's not a functions component. But we'll talk about it as well. So where's the leak? I mean, there's not enough code really. And actually, hint, this part doesn't really matter. Sorry, what? Exactly, yes. So uh, what do we have to do is clear the event listener. Another example, same thing, right? We have an interval that when this Snoopy component, it's called Snoopy because it just snoops your keystrokes. When it's added to the app and then removed, the interval is still around, the keystrokes are still there. So um, let's see if uh, MemLab can find this. So I posted it someplace. So yeah, it's, it's good to use non-minified code when, you, when you're debugging, uh, when you're trying to find leaks, because this is the Google Maps thing, one of the leaks. Um, VV, OA, 14, VB, yeah, good luck. Uh, there's a word, canvas. Uh, yeah, it's really hard to debug this. Uh, and the other thing is, uh, we like the anonymous functions because they're convenient to write, but uh, a help debug. So if we can name our functions, that'll be even better. So instead of the anonymous thing, then you give it a name. So we give it before, after. Yeah, that's annoying to write. And remember binding anybody? Yeah. Uh, but so maybe there's a, 
is uh, from Tyler that can you know just name functions, maybe with a prefix so that you can uh, find stuff. And use the memlab to record the scenario, which was just add this and then remove it. So then we write it, uh, we run it like the usual. Oh, there's also verbose option that is you know just more verbose output and. Um, uh, it gives you what's in the console, it gives you some messages from Puppeteer if something went wrong, so that's very helpful. So, uh, by default, Memlab looks for abandoned DOM nodes and uh, detached React fibers, which is, you know, we don't, you cannot really do anything about it. It's kind of a, because it's designed to also find leaks in React itself. Um, but, once you run it, then you can say trace all objects, in which case everything in the memory is a suspect. So it gives you a lot more options, not only those. And if we have our functions named with something, then we can say, okay, give me just my, my stuff. And then this is the result. It says, okay, it found that this function, you know, and there was a, so there was a, a retained object, which is this uh, key down function, and then int hello as well. So how do we plug the leak? We just add component will unmount, right? So when, when the component goes out of the DOM, then you remove the listener, you clear the interval, and everything is nice. So uh, yeah, that's the thing about memory leaks that are hard to detect, but really easy to fix. Um, so, spot the leak. No leak? Anybody see anything wrong? Yeah. Well, we misspelled, misspelled on unmount, like component will unmount. Believe it or not, that happens in the while. We found it because, yeah, definitely. If your if your uh, ID helps you find this stuff, great. But it has happened on large apps. I'm, I'm witness to that. So I mean, yeah, mount is capitalized here. You know, who knows how to spell that. And then the promise hook. Um, hmm? Use effect. Yeah. <laughs> use effect. Yeah. Uh, like if you want to uh, use effect to, to, to uh, set up the, the key down listener in an interval as well. Uh, I like kind of this pattern to use effect for uh, one thing at a time, right? Instead of grouping both of them. And uh, how do we plug the leak? Is just make sure that when you use effect, then you use the return value, which is your cleanup function. And that's why I really like this pattern of doing one thing and clean up afterwards, and then another use effect, clean up afterwards, so everything is kind of there. All right, we talked a lot. What are you gonna do tomorrow? Integrate the reporting API. Check all your components will unmount. Do they exist? <laughs> are they spelled correctly? Uh, then check if you have, if you're setting some listeners and, and stuff like this, check the uh, use effect and use layout effect. And uh, yeah, any other object, just give them no, no. And then try memlab and, and the recorder. And like I said, leaks are hard to find. And that's why any sort of tool helps and this one is a particularly good one. So uh, they are easy to fix, you just have to find them. So thank you to Benoit Girard, he was from uh, Mozilla, he was kind of, he, his idea for this whole thing, and Liang did most of the code, and I showed them my extension, and they said, wow, cool. So uh, <laughs> my efforts have been validated. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs>